All right, let's layer in some AP content here. So first off, let's identify this government system that was diagrammed on the board here. We're gonna look to see, you know, can the people participate? And I see that yes, they can. There appears to be elections and they appear to matter. There's power down here. They're electing a representative who's gonna exercise the powers of government on their behalf. So is it dictatorship or democracy? Obviously it's democracy. What type? Representational democracy, or we could say republic. Now here's where the AP content comes in. We have different theories of democracy. Now this diagram kind of helps explain the elite theory of democracy. Because in this theory, in the elite theory of democracy, all the only participation that the people ever do is vote. They don't ever, like your regular people, like myself, never get to participate at this level. We never come to hold the powers of government. The powers of government are actually gonna be held by the elite. Okay, so whether it's the business elite, or it's the intellectual elite, or it's the political elite, the elites are the ones that exercise the powers of government. My, myself, I get to choose be between competing elites. We saw that distinctly in the last election when we had a business elite, Donald Trump, running against a political elite, Hillary Clinton. Boom, there you go. That's the elite theory of democracy. Now, a very pessimistic view of this theory is that the election itself doesn't really matter. It's really just symbolic. It's just a way for the people to feel like they're involved in the political process and all of the actual decisions are being made by the elites. All right, again, we have a republic, we have a representational democracy, we see that the people are participating, but in, uh, we have a different theory of democracy in this case. This is the pluralist theory of democracy. Now, the pluralist theory of democracy says that an individual, by him or herself, really has no impact on the system. That your vote, your part, individualistic participation doesn't really matter. You need a way to amplify your voice to get the people with the powers of government to listen to you and to take the policy positions that you want. You do that by joining groups. And we have some groups that have been very successful at this. So there's a good argument to make that the United States really operates under the pluralist theory of democracy. So you see groups like the National Rifle Association. They're able to organize their members and then they talk to the people up here and they say, hey, we can guarantee you this many votes. They also give money to the campaigns of the people up here so that they're more willing to listen to their policy positions. So if you really want to make an impact in your democratic system, in your Republican form of government, you need to join a political group. That's the pluralist, pluralist, plural, pluralist theory of democracy. Bam. All right, so we have a final theory of democracy that you need to know. This is the participatory theory of democracy. And the adherence to this theory suggests that you need to participate in all walks of life. You're not just gonna vote, you're not gonna run for office, but you're going to write letters. You're going to work for campaigns. But it's more than just that. It's more than just changing the manner in which you participate. It's all walks of life. So yes, you're gonna participate in national politics, but you're gonna participate in state and local politics as well, whether it's Hennepin County politics, whether it's school board politics. You're going to be involved in those areas of your life as well. And in fact, a true adherent to this theory is going to, as much as they can, try to shift the power out of a representative's hand and put it back into the hands of the people. So then they're trying to advocate whenever they can that democracy should look like this. And what model is this? That's right, that's your direct democracy. So at the state level, we do have mechanisms that we call, that call for direct democracies. There's the initiative, there's referendums that you will learn about down the road, which are tools that allow for a republic to operate like a direct democracy, which demands that the people participate. So the more we can get our republic to operate like this, the more we are adherence to the participatory theory of democracy. Wham.